Okay. Okay, guys, today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do gestural drawings. So what are gestural drawings? Basically, they're very loose, not realistic, but it's a very good place to start. Um, it's a fundamental that we all need to work on just getting used to holding the pencil in different ways, uh, using different types of paper, tilting the paper in different ways. So here's our reference for today. I like to use ballet poses and a lot of yoga poses because they're very, you know, the movement, there's a lot of movement. So that's what we want. If you have your supplies, you need one pencil, but usually I keep three just in case this starts to break or whatever. So just one pencil is fine, but I have three, an eraser, and of course your paper. So let me move these out of the way. So first, we must learn how to hold the pencil. Sometimes when we write, we write like this. When we're drawing, try to hold it like you're, like you're pinching some salt and grab the pencil from above. So instead of having the pencil on top of your hand, it's better to have it your hand above. So you kind of have your whole arm moving, right? Whole arm moving instead of just your wrist and fingers. So you have more movement. So that's how you hold the pencil like this. When you start, you can just start anywhere. So, all right, let's get started. Everyone has their paper. Okay. So look for the bigger shapes first. On this ballet dancer, very nice pose. The first thing I notice is this big C, the letter C, which connects to the center. And then you have something like an arrow or upside down V that points up. I'm going to draw the big C first. So on my sheet, really loosely. Oops. Just really fast line. Just be copying this one and then bring it over. And at the bottom of the C, I like to draw a little, just a little dot. If you can see that just a little, very lightly. And then going to draw the V shape. Just keep the shapes nice and loose. Don't worry about the details too much. And if you look here, it kind of looks like a big S as well. Another thing to do is if you don't know where to put this leg, this middle one, you can compare it to other things in the image. So it's kind of halfway between the body. So if you took a line and drew it all the way up here, it's about halfway between the front of the torso and the back of the torso. It's just a good reference to landmark. You don't need to be too realistic. It's very loose and gestural. Hold on, I'm going to adjust my camera. Once the shapes are there, I also like to draw where the feet are flat or where they 
sit on the ground so that it doesn't look like they're floating. Just a nice flat line, drag it across the paper. Now we're going to start loosely blocking in the shapes. So what shapes do we see besides the big C and the S and everything else? Well, oh, we forgot about the head. Okay, so the head just very loosely, like you're circling something on the page, something like an oval. Okay, now that is out of the way. Uh, let's move on to the shapes. So the human body is very complex. As you can see, there's ridges, muscles, bends in the clothes and everything. There's a lot, but we can simplify them. I'm going to follow the head down to the shoulder, shoulders kind of circle, right? It's right below the head. So actually I'm gonna move it back a little bit over to this side. I'm gonna bring the front out a little bit and just follow this line and drag it until you think where the end of the torso is. So just drag it like that. The back itself is kind of like a circle, but almost triangular. From this shoulder to this shoulder to the spine, it's a triangle shape. So let's try to make a round triangle. Follow the back all the way down to the edge of the dress or the skirt. This is an indentation of the hip, just a little mark for myself so I know where it is. Okay, we're gonna come back to this side of the body. If you look here where the waist connects, there is a little flap of the skirt that falls over. So this line, bring it down like that.
I will move on to the legs now. So I like to divide this line into sections. So the first section will be the first part of the leg. And then here's a knee. So that's where I'm going to put the line. Roughly, it just lands below the shoulder a little bit before. So using your own reference, you can draw a line down. And see how mine is a little bit too forward. So I'm going to move the knee back a little bit. So that's the first division. The next part is, will be the calves. They're a little bit shorter than the distance from here to the end, which is where the hip is, but it's also not too short so that the foot looks too long. So let's say that's where the foot will end. Let me erase this real quick. This foot is a bit lower than this one. So when I landmark where, there, where the ground is, I'm gonna put this line a little bit lower than this one. So this one's higher up. Right? And landmark the end or the ankle. Oh. And for now, you can just draw a straight line down to the foot, to the tip of the toes. But later we can go in and add those tiny details where, you know, the flesh curves out a little bit and curves in. For now, just stick to simple lines. The very bottom connect as well. And the leg also goes in a little bit. And disappears. Here we can slow down a little bit and just kind of sit back and look at what our paper looks like currently. Just see if anything sticks out, if there's anything to be moved a little bit, but just look at it for a little bit and then we'll move on. And I'm gonna move on now. So let's, what I'm gonna do next is the edge of the skirt. It's just a line. It goes up a little bit. <coughs> doing the next knee in comparison to this knee I'm gonna see which one's higher so roughly this knee the top of this knee kneecap is a little bit taller than this one so that means where this is right now is in a pretty good spot An 
around. Obviously, we don't see where the leg is when it's covered by the dress, but we can use an imaginary line to help ourselves. Because sometimes when we try to draw something that is not there yet, or it doesn't make sense, it turns out a little bit weird. So I like to draw that line, just tell myself that something is there. And this leg basically goes straight down. So we can just do that. Also have to remember the foot is here. So leave a little bit of that room for the foot. So this is where I've decided the ankle will be. The foot is turned outwards. So we're going to just draw a little dot that goes out and then another dot that shows me where, well, maybe not there. This dot will be where the toe is. So right here. And then this line will kind of tell me where the foot is going because obviously when they see this it's foreshortened and what that means is to the camera the front is overlapping the back of the foot so it doesn't look sometimes when we're drawing the foot it can be very difficult but what it is is just kind of like an oval in the front Here, I can blow it up on a larger sheet so it's a little bit more clear. So coming down, this is the ankle. The foot turns out. So you wanna, it's relatively on a flat scale or on a flat paint plane, sorry. And the toe, it's just one oval, pretty simplified shape, but it's almost like a cheese wedge. Okay, now let's just wrap up this foot before we go on to the arms. Just boop. this quick line to show the heel and then the sole of the foot.
I'm going to fix this leg a little bit because looking between this and this, I feel like my foot is a little too far out. So I'm going to take my eraser and just erase starting from the knee. All right, let's move on to the arms. So let's just look at it for a second. The first shoulder, the left shoulder, the one's facing us is out there. The other shoulder is about, is not directly above it, but directly above it and to the right. So if you imagine a line going up, to the right a little bit. And the level of the shoulder that's on top does not, it's not over the head, it's below the top of the head. So we're not gonna put it up here, put it below the head, right about here. So that's where the second shoulder will be. I would even say make it a little bit lower. And a very important line is this, where the shoulder blade creates this curved edge over here, this ridge along the back. So let's draw that. Take your pencil and just drag it down. Landmark the elbows. It's about halfway down the back, just like the knee, but a little bit more to the right. So where the knee is, it's a little bit further. So I need to put it right there. That's my elbow. So mark the elbows. roughly on the same line.
And then following this line straight down for this arm, we're going to mark the wrist, which is about at the end of the skirt. So you can put it right here. The other one is a little bit, if you drag a line down, the wrist is right before the end of the skirt. So let's do that. And then connect. And for the hands, let's stick to very simple shapes as well. I don't tend to draw every single finger, but this looks like a really long triangle to me. So I'm going to make the top part of the hand look like a triangle, very long. Well, not really that long, but. The thumb is just kind of like a rectangle that sticks out. Keep it nice and loose and gestural.
And the last step, well, not really the last step, last thing to draw in will be the head. So right now, if you may notice, everything's very dark. Let's just draw it in. I wonder if I can get the lighting a little bit better. Nope. All right, now that most of the body parts are in, we will now begin to add a little bit of shading. So a few weeks ago, we hopefully, I think I remember teaching this, but just cross hatching very simple parallel lines. The closer they are, obviously the darker. It's just, yeah. I'm just wondering uh, at this stage whether we you want to check in with everybody to see how their drawing is, the outline is doing. If anybody is having any issue with any part of it. Yeah, sure. So, how's everyone doing? Hold on, let me open it so I can see. Ah, Henry. Oh, good job, Henry. The the. Does anybody need anything repeated? Uh, Louis, hi, hi, hi. Oh, more, more to the middle, Louis, more to the middle. Okay. Okay. Angela, how's your drawing, Angela? Yeah, I guess I guess with the pencil it's hard to see, eh? Yeah, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's just harder to see on the camera, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I guess they're doing okay. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, I'll give you guys a little bit more time just to look at it take some time to slow down maybe and then and then we'll move on to the next part
Oh, and another step if you want is to draw in the shadow. With, so just outline the shadow, kind of like what you would do with like still life drawings of yeah, fruits, bowls, anything if you've ever done something like that. So. It's just a rough little shape. I'll outline the shadow so we can shade it in later. And it goes to the left. And this way it makes your figure look more rooted in the environment instead of just like a floating person. So add the shadow if you want.
All right, how's everyone doing? Good, are we able to move on? Okay. Now the next part is to add some shading. Maybe you've already added some shading. That is great. So for shading, we're also going to keep very loose, not too detailed. See, if you look at there's all these different spots on the dress. We don't want to get too detailed. Just make sure the darkest parts are dark and the light parts are light. So what we're gonna do with our pencil is to just hatch. So let me show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start on the top of the head.
go lightly at first so we can add more layers. And the light is coming in from this direction. So when the light is coming in, the things that are on the lower left half will be darker. I like to work from darkest to lightest. This way, um, I have a range of values. Because if I go too light, then it's hard to tell the mid-tones apart from the shadows. So just shade. Don't worry about having too many details in the face. We can always erase later. And this is quite a difficult image for the face, simply because most of it is covered in the shadow. Sometimes if you squint, so I close your eyes and blur everything, like as if a camera is out of focus, it can help you see the bigger shapes. So right now I'm squinting and looking at this part and trying to see where exactly is the darkest. So squint, look away and squint again. So right now I'm just going to shade in some of the darkest parts of the entire image. And that will be the head, no, the front of the torso, the front of the dress, especially in this little side of the leg over here and around the foot, as well as the hands and this arm. It's like a dark line going across. And this part's a little lighter than the here. If you can see, there's a little line dividing these two. So that just means there's a leg here and then the light is coming through the fabric. Zoom up a little bit. So we keep this triangle area a little bit lighter, but it's still very dark compared to the other parts. Just won't make it too dark. And just continue hatching.
I'm gonna leave a little bit of highlights in the hair. Now for the arms, there is a very, very thin line. You can see here with the light probably on the floor that bounced back up. So now we see this line. If you want to keep that, um, I would suggest taking in your pencil and just lining the edge as close as you can. Kind of has it fade out when it reaches the dress. And tell yourself, okay, I'm not going to sketch over this thin white line, which is the refraction of the light. And of course, shade in the shadow if you have the shadow. If not, that's fine.
home. That's why I have another pencil. All right, once your darkest parts are in, you can take a step back, look at it from a further perspective. I'm gonna stand up and look at it far, far away. shade this part a little bit because I just realized the clothes a little bit darker. And there's this tiny dark spot over here. So let's add that.
Another interesting thing you can add if you have space is if you notice in the picture, the floor is kind of shiny. It reflects the figure. So we're not gonna um, draw a direct reflection of it, but take your pencil, hold it like this, and just gently, lightly shade like that. So it looks like this person might be standing on water or something shiny and reflective.
excuse me, the curve to the outside is supposed to be uh, the lighter. Which part? Okay, the, the bottom hand, beside the hand here is supposed to be lighter, right? Here, on the outside curve, right? This one? Yeah, how, how a little bit. So here, right? One more. But here, more little bit. Settle. Uh, you, the right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good observation. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. And the top one. The finger mm -hmm. outside, yeah. Here, more light. Right? We go. No, like the triangle setting. Right triangle. This one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here, why? Here, a little bit right, but here, light, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, and then nice.
Yeah, all right. So how's everyone doing? It's almost end of class, I think. Hopefully pretty good. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see your pictures. Oh, I see one. Yeah, that's really nice. Hello, we Very nice. 